If I told you that the United States was covered by mining claims, that would be a true statement, and you might come to a conclusion from that. But then if I added that the majority of those claims are closed claims held by deceased owners from the 1800s, well, you might come to another conclusion. You might think that those claims have been mined out from long ago. But then if you learned that the vast majority of those mining claims were merely filed as real estate, they were sold in New York City, just like stocks are today, well, you might sense an opportunity. And then if I told you that with the knowledge you're going to receive today, where you could take these old closed mining claims and figure out whether they had gold on them or not, and thus improve the property many times fold, and file them under your own name, you might come to an entirely different conclusion than that first conclusion. Well, if you're new, welcome. The kind of statements that you're seeing are the kind that we like to see. There are many, many thousands of them on the movies now. We've been doing this over 20 years. And today, we're going to be talking about gravel bars. Where gold is in the gravel bar, how you identify it, how you economically mine it with nothing more than hand tools. And, of course, you can step up and do the mining with anything after that that you choose to. Probably 90% of the small scale or artisanal miners mine gravel bars and there's a good reason for that. With the gravel bar gold, whatever spot we're in on the gravel bar, we can plan the economics of recovery. We know from bucket to bucket, it's going to be about the same, and we can plan, actually, an income from it. As opposed to out in the desert where we're finding nuggets, we never know first whether we're going to find a nugget that day, or how big it's going to be, is it the right, you know, uh, consistency, is it pretty enough to be in jewelry. Now, the difference between you and somebody who's been here for a long time and gone through the whole series is they know how not only to mine a gravel bar, they know all that stuff by now, but they also know how to metal detect in the desert, they know how to gemstone prospect, they know how to cut gemstones, they know how to make that into beautiful jewelry via my wife's teaching. We've launched many, many jewelry businesses worldwide change people's lives. And we know all that from the comments because people tell us all of that. And uh, it's a very humbling feeling to know that we've, we've changed their lives for the better. And hopefully, if you're looking for a new activity, you're just going to be another one. Another success story, and we like success. So... Uh, I hope you enjoy this. Good luck in your future activities. So where is the gold near me? Well, if you're in the United States, and indeed most parts of the world, that's been figured out for you. The major gold veins run north and south. Now, veinlets can run in any direction, but we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I want to get you on the gold as quickly as possible. So we're going to look for rivers that run east and west and cut these major gold veins and they transport by far the most gold ever found. So you got a good possibility to look in east, west flowing rivers, creeks, streams, anywhere where it has the possibility of cutting gold veins. And you might want to remember that when you're looking up those uh, mining claims as well. That's a tip. Now, in addition to the east-west flowing rivers, there is an area in the north 
United States that had glacial activity. And in this part of the United States, gold can flow and be found anywhere, in any stream, in any creek, going any direction. This is glacial gold. And some of the best gold is actually found in the area outlined. Some of the best gold ever found was in middle and southern Indiana and up in Minnesota. So if you're in those areas, you're in luck. So we're talking about gravel bars. How does gold act in a gravel bar? Well, if we're going to look at gravel bars, we need to look at how gold acts in the desert first. That was our last film. Large pieces of gold in the desert travel along the angular surface of the material and they'll fall into a crack while the little small tiny bits will go into the crack as well but they'll work their way through the interlocking cracks to the subsurface and down to the bedrock out of your range of your metal detector but that's why spectacular finds are made in the desert because you have these big chunks of gold that will be right on the very surface in a, in a cup of material where they got trapped. You find spectacular finds out there, but it's totally random. Now when gold gets into the water from whatever its source, mountain range, what have you, it, it, it acts in a predictable manner. Once it's in the water, it travels in a line called the gold line. Now, the gold line, we want to think of that as a dotted line because as the bottom undulates, it's in skip. But overall, it's in a line. And where it goes around bends, it forms gravel bars. The outside bend will be clean. The inside bend will have a gravel bar of round river rock and round pea gravels. And when gold... They, actually, the, the bars themselves set up in an airfoil shape, and they will actually suck gold from this gold line. So you need to pay attention to all of this and try to figure out where the gold lines are as best you can. Now, when gold gets into a gravel bar, a big piece of gold in these round river rocks and pea gravel, it'll go straight down through those layers to bedrock. It's the smaller gold being the same specific gravity as those gravels or lighter that will stay up top. And this this is why and the tremendous amounts of them. This is why the mining companies and everyone else goes after this small gold. They're not after nuggets, they're after this little small gold because it's predictable. They can have a reliable income stream from it, and you can too, I'm just on a smaller scale because we're not asking you to go out and, uh, you know, buy front end loaders or any of that stuff you see on TV because that's a TV show. All right, so you're sitting there absorbing this somewhere in the world and wondering what do I need to start to identify gold in a gravel bar. We're going to need three things. You need a pocket magnet, a 10 power jeweler's loop, just a magnifying glass, and a pocket microscope is the best for identifying the really small stuff. With those three things, you can identify gold in any gravel bar anywhere in the world. With the pocket magnet, you can put that right down on the gravel bar and it'll pick up those grains of iron sands, black sands, and you'll know that you've got iron black sand. You can look at the gravel itself and see if you've got quartz. Well, those are two major identifiers that you need right then. And then you can scoop some dirt and start looking with your uh, pocket microscope for very small grains of gold and if you move up to the jeweler's loop and can still see gold, 
you've got a pretty good deposit going already that will probably be profitable to you. Now we found some indicator materials, but we'd like to find the richer deposits. How do we do that? Well, luckily, when the gold is being uh, taken off of these gold lines and into the gravel bars, the indicator materials come with them. The iron black sands and the quartz. So the bar will be striped like zebra stripes. That's the way to think of it. Except with these stripes, as it goes toward the upstream side or the upstream part of the river, it's where the stripe goes into the water, it's actually pointing you to the deposit it came from. So there can be many, many stripes as these gold line skips have skipped along the bottom and it's pulling from each one and there will be a stripe. You can see that from space on your satellite view before you ever go to one of these bars and you can certainly see it in person on the bar. Being from that, a light bulb should have gone off in your head on how to work this. We're simply going to follow the zebra stripe into the water and to the depth that we're comfortable with, whatever that is with our shovel. And we're going to work, turn around, work back towards the bar for the very richest material. Nobody even has to know we worked it. We can stop at the bar and pick up the next one or work down the face, the whole face of the bar, and uh, it'll be clean as a whistle. All right, now you've found gold in the gravel bar and you want to find the heavier concentrations of it with a metal detector. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, 20 years ago, Benson and Hartle and I made a film of just, just that. And this metal detector here is 23 years old now. Still working like a champ. I mean, it doesn't have to get expensive. The company is out of business, but the metal detector isn't. It works just fine. The main thing that you want on a screen is it to give you a mineralization number. And we can figure out everything from that. And here's how we do it. Well, let's think about this for a second. A gravel bar has a low side and a high side. Now, the low side is toward the water. The high side is toward the bank. Since gold is 15 times heavier than the other stream bed materials, well, where is it going to be? That's right. It's going to be on the low side, set up in a line, or these skips that we were talking about. Now, since the gravel bar is in an airfoil shape, that's the way they set up, and it's sucking gold from these skips. So you're going to get these mineralization numbers that will tell you where the most black sands are. That's what it's telling you with the high number. Now on your screen, this is what you're going to see. All right, while you're digesting those numbers, it's important if you're going to metal detect. We're going to talk about how you're going to get the gold out of the bar. And we're by far the most successful people do this. They do it with simple hand tools. Why do they do it that way? Well, because they're making a profit from the get-go. They use simple shovels, screens, and they screen into five-gallon buckets. After they get it home, they'll figure out how rich that spot is, and then they'll know how many five-gallon buckets they need to dig to get the income stream they want. So what do people look for who are doing this? Well, they're looking for 480 grains of barley because 480 grains of barley equals an ounce of gold. 24 of those grains equals a penny weight. And by penny weights, they know what they've got in the bucket. Am I getting a penny weight worth of gold in the bucket? Am I getting two penny weights, three penny weights, more than that? And from that, they can figure an income. Some people want an ounce of gold a year. They'll do that on their vacation. Some people want 
an ounce of gold a month. Some people want an ounce of gold a day. But this is how tremendous stores of wealth are built. They build this over time, and you can too. Well, if you've hung on this long, obviously you passed the course and should get a reward. So here's some golden fried chicken. We hope you enjoyed it and have much success out in the field. Thousands have, and we expect to hear the same from you. There shouldn't be any difference between you and anyone else. Hope to see you out in the field someday. Help somebody. You'll be glad you did.